Hello friends, welcome to your own YouTube channel Achievers and Data Engineering. My name is Gyanind and in this video of Power BI interview questions and answer series, we are going to talk about one of the important questions asked in Power BI interviews is regarding data model optimization. Now this question can be asked to you in multiple ways around like explain the best explain the steps or best practices to follow while optimizing Power BI data sets or Power BI data model, or it can be asked like how to optimize, uh, you know, pre setup data model in Power BI. Sometimes, you know, if you are applying for a data analyst, not only as a Power BI developer, but for as a data analyst and you will be working on other reports as well, then you might also come across a question regarding the stages in data modeling, right? So let's uh, see that and let's talk about these in details in this video. This video is going to be completely a theoretical, like theoretical video, and I'll be explaining uh, those best practices only. So uh, let's get started with that. All right, guys. So before I go ahead and start with the discussion, I would highly recommend if you are finding this video for the first time, please be sure to hit the like and subscribe button to stay up to date on any latest video that I upload. All right. So now let's talk about uh, data modeling best practices. So whenever you are about to um, prepare a data model in Power BI, then you should consider achieving a best or optimized data model having Two layers right so there are two layers through which you should work on to optimize your data model now the first layer is data source layer right so whenever we create a data model in power bi we like go ahead and connect with a data source right so it can be sql it can be analysis services it can be a number of sources available uh, of options available in power bi right so Whenever we are talking about modeling, whenever we are talking about the best practices so that we can have a faster refresh rate, where we can have a fa faster tiles refresh, or uh, when we are talking about, uh, you know, the best performance for the report for the end users, right? So first of the first level of optimization actually starts from the data source layer, right? So when it comes to data source, data source can be optimized to ensure the fastest possible refresh because we are actually you know getting data from data source right and if it is not import then every time our query will hit to the data source so we need to make sure that our data source is already optimized for the fastest possible data refresh so that you know we can get data without any delay now to achieve that we can go ahead and create indexes so for example if we are using sql data source then we can go ahead and create indexes on the tables or we can you know create table partitions or we can come up with indexed waves right so these kind of steps will increase or boost the performance now also one more important thing is here if we are kind of running a lot of calculations in power bi so if it is possible then we can actually you know create those calculations in the data source itself so for example we can write a sql query or depending upon the data source that we are using we can write a query over there run those complex calculations and maybe using an store procedure we can bring data into power bi data model so that will save a lot of time for running ad hoc calculations in power bi and uh, reports will be refreshed and a data model will be refreshed on time and gives a faster performance now if we talk about non-relational data sources then a pre-integrated uh, like sources can be pre-integrated with relational stores right also uh, if we have if we have an on-prem data source and then we can ensure the gateways have enough resources preferably on dedicated machines also we can make sure that the sufficient network bandwidth is available and uh, that data gateway is installed and set up to the closest proximity of the data source to the data source all right so uh, these are the few factors which you know which we should consider on the data source layer when it comes to optimizing the data model now let's talk about a data model layer so uh, 
Now, when we are talking about the data model layer, now we are talking about the actual model that we have built up in Power BI and all these steps, all these best practices that I'm going to explain uh, that we can implement within Power BI desktop. All right, so the number one is calculated tables and indexed, sorry, calculated tables and calculated columns increase the model size, right? So as we have discussed in our previous videos, calculated columns occupy space and they actually, you know, increase the data model size. So they actually result in a longer refresh time because every time we will refresh data, those calculated tables and columns will start to, you know, get update and refreshed uh, like uh, simultaneously right so to avoid that this we can go ahead and do that calculation in the you know data source itself as, as we just discussed and uh, like this faster performance can be achieved when the data is materialized right now the another thing is we can avoid white tables now when, when i'm saying white tables is we should only bring the columns which we require. So for example, if there is a sales data and we are only concerned about maybe sales ID, sales date and order amount, then why to bring all of the columns which are not required? They will only you know, increase the data model size and we will end up having you know, longer refresh time and poor performance. Now, another point is avoid many to many relationship. So, if you have like multiple tables in your model, so make sure to avoid many to many relationship. Model query performance can be improved by configuring single direction relationship instead of using bi-directional. So make sure when you are, you know, setting up relationships in Power BI data model, try to avoid many to many, many relationships, right? Instead, you can also go ahead and use cross filtering if like if there is a situation like that. Also, uh, prefer a star schema. Now, uh, that completely depends upon the data that you have and if you can, like prefer a star schema. Also, if you can, uh, if not, then maybe you can go with a snowflake, but as a, like best practices should be, you should follow a star schema. Now, uh, let's talk about another point is to follow the data modeling steps or th of three stages. Now, what are the three stages of data modeling? We will go ahead and talk about in another slide. And just to make sure that you are following these st stages. So these might not be applicable uh, if you talk about only in case of Power BI, though we can utilize it, but mostly it comes, it is utilized when you are developing, you know, a data model maybe for um, any relational data source or maybe like in SQL, but still you can, you know, actually utilize that concept in Power BI as well. Now, if you have a big data model, then incremental refresh can dramatically reduce the refresh time and conserve memory and CPU, right? So incremental refresh can be set up so it will actually avoid refreshing entire data every time we hit refresh and it will refresh only the latest data or you know the number of days, months or years, whatever we have defined during setup of incremental refresh. So uh, at this point of time, if you don't know how to set up incremental refresh, please do let me know in the comments. I'll go ahead and make another video on it. Now, another important factor is to using a centralized date table. So sorry, it's it should be date. All right. So uh, when we are using a centralized date table, then in Power BI, actually instead of using a date hierarchy for each and every date column which is available in the model, Power BI will refer to the date table that we have defined as a date table and it will end up reducing a lot of data model size and also it will increase the performance. Now you should make sure if you are not using any time intelligence, DAX or functions, functionalities in your data model, please go ahead and turn off this time intelligence feature just for that report. You can go into the Power BI file and options and over there you will be able to get this option to turn it off. Also, if you are using aggregation uh, tables that can also achieve the faster query performance, but uh, you know, it will have, it will actually increase the data model in terms of size and that will end up having a longer refresh time. But if you are kind of uh, displaying your reports to the end user, those tile refresh time and dashboard performance will be optimized in when you are using aggregated tables. Now uh, let's talk about few other factors which you can you know uh, implement or follow just for a better data refresh. 
also for you know for better uh, da dashboard optimization now uh, the first point in this uh, uh, like considering the other factor is to uh, reducing the size is the best option to optimize the performance uh, so as i said if you have a table where all of the columns are not required why to bring all of the columns or why to bring all of the related tables so uh, most of the time when we bring data from sql server maybe we you know we tend to click that button where it says bring all related tables so if you don't need all of those tables avoid bringing them in the data model because ultimately they will increase the model size and increase the refresh time and end up with a poor performance you can go ahead and use the summarize tables also make sure if you are clearing the cache in power bi engine uh, that will also boost the performance use a default to a default or certified visuals so uh, actually default or certified visuals gives a better performance and uh, we have you know a lot of community support available for those certified visuals as well if you will use any third party visual and they might that might end up not working when is when your report is published to the you know end customer and you will might have to you know change your visual uh, on the last point of time so to avoid that uh, use default or certified visuals only limit number of rows so in a particular report or a dashboard you should limit the number of tiles because if you will have more than five or six tiles on a single dashboard obviously it will take time to refresh all of the tiles and whenever user will uh, you know change any slicer or filter on the report then obviously it will take time to refresh all of the reports so that it can show the latest visualization now uh, if you're working on a data model if it is possible use import because that gives the best performance in compared to rest of the model like in direct query or in um, like live connection so use import if possible now another effective way to reduce the data model size is to set the storage more uh, more property for large fact type right so when you will publish your report on the Power BI services, you can go into settings of that report and you will find an option over there where you can set this property for a large fact type tables uh, for, for that particular data model and that will effectively reduce the model size. Also, when you are creating DAX, uh, try to use variables and uh, make sure if you have too many DAXs created, try to do some fine tuning of, of those DAXs and using external tools like you know, DAX Studio, we can do some performance analysis on the final report that you have prepared. You can check which particular DAX is taking time or which particular element in your report is taking most of the time and you can go ahead and focus on that particular element to you know, optimize it. So these are the few factors or important steps that you should follow in order to optimize your data model or if the data model is already set up how, like this is how you can follow these steps and go ahead and optimize a pre-set up data model. Now uh, let's talk about what are the three stages in data modeling. All right. So as I said, uh, it is not only in case of Power BI data modeling stages are applicable when it comes to, you know, setting up any data model. So there are three stages on a high level. So number one is conceptual data model. So conceptual data model is nothing but, for example, if you talk about in reference to Power BI, suppose you have connected to the data and very high level tables because you are just starting with setting up a model, then you can call it as a conceptual data model. So in this model, the data is on very you know high level so that we can easily understand it. Uh, we define high level relationships. Also, usually it is prepared to communicate business structure and concepts. And because it's very high level, it is mostly prepared by business stakeholders or architects. So you can think of think of an example like you are getting a new project to you know start with Power BI reports. So in that situation, if you are getting uh, get to know data for the first time or you are getting a download by any stakeholder, then at that point of time, they might already come up with some conceptual data model. Maybe in not in Power BI, maybe the technical uh, like technology that they are using to store their data 
or maybe sometimes it is being created using some flow charts and shared to you when when you are going to work on some reports now another data model is a logical data model so this data model can be prepared once conceptual data model is prepared so uh, there is not much difference i would say uh, however this conceptual sorry this logical data model add a lot of more details into the conceptual data model like adding the attributes so if we talk about in terms of sql we actually don't add columns we just talk about tables in conceptual data model however in logical data model we add attributes and we introduce the primary keys and foreign keys and also we try to add uniquely identical attributes or non key attributes in the data model or in the tables now talk, talking about the physical data model uh, this is the final data model that we prepare uh, when it comes to the three stages of data modeling so physical data model is the final implementation of logical data model tables and columns names are database compatible so like we tend to name the database tables and columns as per the database uh, dat actual data source so that they can be you know related to each other and uh, can be cross verified if like if applicable database specific data types we follow like specific data types now physical data model is necessary as it is used by other technologies and data analyst or reporting analyst use this data model so um, for example if you if you are going to work on a report uh, on a pre set up data model or maybe a pre set up data source from sql or any other data sources then most probably you are hitting to a physical data model and if there are any kind of a sensitive information or information which is not supposed to be shared in reporting most of the time that is being hidden within a logical data model by maybe a data database administrator or um, maybe business by business business stakeholders so you will get to know or work on only physical data model if you are working on a pre setup you know model in power bi so i hope you have got enough understanding on data modeling best practices and how you can optimize a pre setup data model in power bi so at this point of time if you have any questions please do let me know in the comments i would love to answer that and i can go ahead and talk about those in more details in other videos so if you like the content please don't forget to subscribe to stay up to date on any latest video that i upload thank you for watching keep learning have a great day